Hi, Speech Pals. If you've been here before, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. If you're new here, my name is Nina. I'm a first year master's student at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, and I'm studying to be a speech language pathologist. And welcome to another early language learning video. Today on our language learning adventure, we're going to be reading Marsupial Sioux by John Lithgow. Marsupial Sioux is a story about a kangaroo who is simply sick of doing the same old thing. She says the hopping that kangaroos do simply rattles her brain. <laughs> so she sets off to find a brand new place among all of her fellow Australian animals, but nothing seems to really work out. It was not until she met a small wallaby that reminded her of herself that she realized that maybe being a kangaroo really isn't so bad after all. Sue does a lot of silly things to find a new place where she belongs, and we're going to pretend to do what she does. But you have to listen carefully, because there will be two things to remember. Do you think you can remember two steps? Great, I'm so excited to go on this adventure with you and Sue. Marsupial Sue by John Lithgow. Marsupial Sue, a young kangaroo, hated the hopping that kangaroos do. It rattled her brain. It gave her migraine. A backache, sideache, tummy ache too. One morning in May, she wandered away leaving her relatives grazing on hay. What did she see way up in a tree? Koalas gaily at play. Let's pretend to do what Sue does. There will be two steps to remember. Listen carefully. First, look way up, like you're looking at the top of a tree. Do you see the top? Great! Now say, hi koalas! Great job following directions, keep it up! And suddenly she was convinced that she had found a way to escape all that bouncing around. She climbed to the top, she heard a loud pop, and howling in pain, fell again to the ground. Oh my goodness, that's silly Sue. She tried something that kangaroos don't normally do. Let's pretend to climb a tree like Sue. Listen carefully to my two steps. First, put your hands out like you have big claws like a koala. Now pretend to climb, climb, climb the tree. How far can you get? Great job listening and climbing. Keep up the great work. Marsupial Sue, a lesson or two. Be happy with who you are. Don't ever stray too far from you. Get rid of that frown and waltz up and down beneath a marsupial star. If you're a kangaroo through and through, just do what kangaroos do. With summer at hand, the weather was grand, so Sue stole away from her kangaroo band. Combing the shore, she heard someone snore, a platypus asleep in the sand. Shh! We have to be quiet to listen to these next steps. First, put your finger to your lips. Now, say, shh. We don't want to wake our platypus friend up. Keep up the good listening, friends. How cozy, she said, completely misled ignoring the probable trouble ahead. How perfect for me! A life by the sea, all snug in a watery bed. So she flopped in the mud with a thud and a shout, 
She swallowed a scallop, a shrimp, and a trout. Oh, that silly Sue, always doing things that kangaroos don't usually do. Kangaroos don't live in the sea. Let's pretend to lay down in the mud like Sue. First, lay down. Great job. Now say, ah, like you're so relaxed. You have some great listening ears. By quarter to two, the poor kangaroo had typhoid, pneumonia, colic, and gout. Ew! Marsupial Sue, a lesson or two, be happy with who you are. Don't ever stray too far from you. Get rid of that frown and waltz up and down beneath a marsupial star. If you're a kangaroo, through and through, just do what kangaroos do. That autumn, once more, Sue got to explore. A creature she'd never laid eyes on before. A version of her, in miniature, a wallaby with cousins galore. Before very long, Sue joined in the throng, flouncing and jouncing and bouncing along. Happy and free, she shouted with glee, At last I'm where I belong! Bouncing with the wallabies seems like something that kangaroos can do. Are you ready to bounce with Sue and her wallaby friends? Great! Let's listen to our two steps. First, stand up. Good job. Now, let's bounce, bounce, bounce. How high can you go? Wow, that's some really good bouncing, friends. Then she looked at the wallaby, sprightly and small. Exactly like her, only not quite so tall. She widened her eyes and cried with surprise. A kangaroo's life's not so bad after all. Marsupial Sue, no longer so blue. You're happy with who you are. You'll never stray too far from you. You're rid of that frown. So waltz up and down beneath a marsupial star. You are a kangaroo through and through, so do what kangaroos do. You are a kangaroo through and through, so do what kangaroos do. Thank you for joining Sue and I on our adventure, friends, and good listening! And remember, it's good to try something new, but in the end, it's always best to be you. Hi parents, just like always, I thought of a few activities that you could do at home to keep developing your child's skills in multi-step direction following. One thing you could do is set up a listening to directions relay race. You can do this in your home or outside. For example, place a hat on the floor and have your child stand on one side of the room while you stand on the other. Tell your child to listen very carefully to your directions. To give them a multi-step direction, you could say, to win the race, you need to put on the hat, skip to me, and give me a high five, and then see how fast can they go. If you want to make it even more fun, you could even see if they could beat their time on a timer. If you find that your child is having difficulty remembering all of those directions, you can try giving them one direction at a time until they finish the race. But it's also important to remember that you can work on direction following at any time of the day, even snack time. You could say, okay, listen carefully. There are two steps to remember. Are you ready? Please put your garbage in the garbage can and your plate in the sink. Again, if your child has difficulty remembering all of these steps at once, that's okay. 
Just give them one step at a time. But make sure to tell them they did a great job. But parents, please remember that you don't always have to come up with a creative idea to make things fun or educational. You can turn any activity into a game and anything into a learning opportunity. Well, speech pals, thank you for joining me and Sue in another language learning adventure. We had so much fun and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.